Hi, Ian Roberts, Master in Composition and the Laboratory of Art Painting Process. You know, really in a sense, the number one convention of Western representational painting is this carving of depth in the picture plane that I've mentioned before. And today I want to talk about foreground, middle ground and background and the role they play in orchestrating that depth. And I'll be using three examples of landscape. I mean, it applies to still life too, of course. Um, but it's just more obvious perhaps in landscape and one is a student painting and then two of my paintings and the third one is the painting I did from this drawing which I showed a few weeks ago which is now finished. So I hope you enjoy that and I'll see you at the end. So I imagine foreground, middle ground and background working something like this. Imagine this is a stage set and here's the audience out here and you're the viewer I mean, you're the director, but I mean, you've got the viewer out here looking at your painting. And you've got things not cluttered at the front of the stage. You want some room here for the actors to be doing the work they need to do and, you know, a table and a chair or whatever. And then there's the background. Sometimes there's a background with three dimensions, but they tend to be sort of flat back here. And that's the role that you want it to be playing in your painting. That the foreground, even though it's in the front and has the most information, you need to make sure we're not stumbling over a bunch of things to get to the midground, which is really what you want us to look at. And the background is serving the function of as like a foil, a simple foil, um, for this to stand out against. Because if you get this too busy, it presses into the midground. And if you get this too busy, it's too hard to get to the midground because we've stumbled through all the weeds and the bushes here. So I'm going to just show you two, three examples where that's happening, where we see foreground, middle ground, and background. And obviously, they're not always delineated like that. But as a general principle, we're wanting to sort of get a sense that the foreground get, brings us into the thing we want to look at and the background is a foil that we see it against. The first image is a student painting and I quite like it. I like the quality of the water and the sky. But what I found is that this piece of yellow right there, because of how hard the edge was between the yellow and the dark, brought a lot of attention this way when in fact fairly naturally you'd want us to be going here and here. So I suggested lightening or, or integrating that a little better there and bringing our attention here and to gray out the background to push that further back. Here we have the foreground this piece of land is the midground, and this is the background. So by defining the background better, you create more distance between here and here. So she's integrated this, so it just sort of is helpful to push, push us over this way. This obviously is pulling us to there. But look at how nice this is now, sitting in front of what is now the background and the distance we get between this and that. So this is one of my plein air sketches and again this is pretty simple. I mean this whole arena is foreground up to sort of here. The midground I think would include that, this shadow, obviously these trees, this whole dark mass. And the thing is, this is now all background. All this is background here. Even though, if you were standing there, this has way more information and is pushing up into the midground. But I wanted to have that distance between here and here, and so I manufactured this to be lighter, as if it were, you know, two, three hundred yards away. So I just finished this last week, 
And it is more complex in terms of foreground, middle ground, and background because we have a lot of information here that is holding our attention. And we've got one entrance into the painting here, and we get a second one over to here that takes us over to here into the buildings up there. So this one really has uh, you know, a foreground area here, the back of the foreground area here, and then mid-ground here, and then this starts to become background. I've simplified it dramatically compared to trees like in here, and then the relationship between light and dark has got even simpler here, even simpler there, and simpler there. So, so what constitutes background as we go further back? There's less and less contrast. So it's kind of a more complex foreground, middle ground, and background, but I kind of like the way it turned out in the end. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, please do subscribe, or if you want to get this on your, in your inbox on Tuesday mornings, you can down, go down below and sign up and get it automatically arriving. And next week, I want to talk about a truly remarkable female artist who really was unknown pretty much until recently, and only in the last year or two has really got her due. And I went to see a show of hers last year, and it was the best show I have seen in a long, long time. So I want to talk about that next week, because she's really something. Bye for now. I hope you have a great week. I hope everyone in your circle is well, and I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye for now.